received a package in the mail from one of my viewers that found this in his garage and had no use for it. I did some work for him before. He said, you want this? You can have it. Something you can tear down on your channel, take a look at, fix, whatever it needs, it's yours. So I said, sure, send it over. It arrived. We're going to take a look at it and uh, see whether it works and what it needs to have done to it. Check it out. I had a viewer I repaired a, a VCR for, I think it was a Mitsubishi VCR. If I remember uh, a month or so ago, he found this in his garage and he said, hey, I'm going to send this down to you. You can uh, make a video of it. You can keep it. I have no use for it, which, okay. Um, it's a little sharp. Real, real machine that goes way back. So I thought this might be something that might be... Uh, kind of cool to see if it works and if not whether we can get it to work it probably doesn't work but we'll find out uh, this uses small reels of tape I just so happen to have some small reels of tape that I can put on this and we can test it out unfortunately we're not going to be able to see whether this thing fully works today because I've I've got it although I do have a reel of tape I don't have a take-up spool handy I know I've got one because I know I've got another one of these little tape recorders that's packed away in storage somewhere and uh, I think the, uh, the take up spool is with the other machine I had the tape here because I've used this tape for for testing on other things but I don't have the small reel here so I guess I could turn it on and see whether it works and we can play it and have tape spilling out onto the, uh, the, the, the counter here but um, as far as anything else goes, that is going to have to wait until I locate the other spool. But we'll, we'll plug it in just for the hell of it and see whether it, it actually even turns on. This one, unlike the other one that I had, actually has a built-in AC transformer. So at least I can turn it on and see whether it makes any sound or whether the motors work. Put in the power cord and what do you know? That motor works. That one appears to work. How about fast forward? That appears to work too. Well, let's just put this tape on and uh, see if we get any noise. And I may have to try and find the take up spool, but at least it will work if it works. Well, I have no idea who that is, but uh, this unit appears to work. Now I got to find that take-up spool, but uh, it's kind of neat. An old reel-to-reel. -reel. It looks like it operates at uh, what three about three and three-quarter IPS. It looks like the speed it operates on. Does that look like? Yeah, it's about three, three and three-quarter IPS. It's got a microphone with it as well. We can test the recording out. See if it records and plays. Microphone's in this bin on the bottom. I think it says bin. Yep, there's the microphone. So, and it can take batteries as well. microphone plugs in right there okay to record on something like this you would hold down the record button and try to uh, record and when I'm talking the level light is flashing therefore I'm making a recording it has automatic level control on here as well so let's just uh, see how well this records me as it spills tape all over the workbench And it 
start to uh, record, and when I'm talking, the level light is flashing. Therefore, I'm making a record. Okay, I turned on the ALC, and that doesn't appear to work. So we'll turn that back off. But it does record, as you, you heard, and it does play. So you set your recording level by adjusting the volume control up or down. And um, should be recording now. Yes, you see I'm going over my shout into the microphone. Uh, but yeah, it, it is. it does appear to be recording. And... Uh, in playback, we used to we used to go check one two, yell into the microphone and see how distorted we could make it. Recording level by adjusting the volume control up or down. Should be recording now. Yes, you see I'm going over. Shout into the microphone, uh, but yeah, it, it is. It does appear to be recording, and uh, in playback, we used to we used to go track one two, yell into the microphone, and see how distorted we could make it. All right, so this little unit works. All I gotta do is find the take up spool. Anyway. It was donated by a viewer, and I don't need to do anything to this because it works. Maybe clean the control is about all I can do. I think the the um, the control sounds a bit dirty. Maybe we'll clean it. That way you guys can see the inside of this thing. Um, don't really have any use for it. Just a collector's piece that was being thrown out, so it was sent down as a donation. And... Um, it will go into my collection of junk. <laughs> Another reel-to-reel -reel machine. I've got a few. Anyway, let's uh, pull the top off it and just clean up that control. And uh, we'll take a look inside it, see what makes this thing tick. So I'll start just by removing these four screws. That should lift the top cover off, I would think. I actually used to have a unit very similar to this when I was a kid. I had a little reel-to-reel -reel machine. Actually, it was, I think it was similar. Well, it might have been like this one. I had a little reel-to-reel -reel machine when I was uh, when I was young. On both sides. There we go. That's a little better. Try not to cause too much damage to the cabinet. And oh, there it is. Cool. It's a little metal chassis in here. The volume control is, is part of the front panel. Little incandescent bulb for the level control. Uh, electronic erase head. And it looks like this is two speeds. We can pull the top off the capstan. I'm just going to get some... Uh, cleaner here and we'll clean the switch. This has actually got a power switch on it as well. So let me get my cleaner and we'll clean the contacts in the uh, little volume control here. Get some cleaner into the control. That should do it. Okay. 
doesn't appear it doesn't appear to be any undue wear on the tape head. That's kind of a unique looking erase head. If you look at the the erase head itself, it's uh, I mean this is what a head looks like inside. If you were to open up a head, it's got the it's got the tape facing material here, but there's no there's no housing over it, right? It's like a bare head. You can see that's actually kind of neat. You can see the coil of wire. And this is the actual the head gap that's on here. Are we able to see that? That's a better shot. So here's the coil that's normally covered up by the, the actual shield on the head. This is the face of the head where you can see where the, the tape makes contact. So just like on a regular head, this surface has got the, the tape gap on here, the, the cap and the, the uh, the ferrite core, I guess this would be ferrite, but you can see the tape gap there, that's where the erase head is, and then the, the record play head over here. It's just the head without the housing. So that's kind of neat, you can see what the actual head looks like. It's just a coil of wire around the magnetic core, the iron core, ferrite core, whatever it's made out of. Looks like the um, top will unscrew from the capstan shaft and you remove it and now it's one and seven eighths. So this is a two speed recorder. It's got the capstan sleeve that fits over top to give you the faster speed. And it just screws back on like that and you screw it down. So three and three quarters and one and seven eighths. This was actually quite a neat little machine back in the day and as you heard when I made that recording uh, the sound quality is actually very good I don't see any capacitor issue on this because if there was well it wouldn't have the sound quality that it did so I'm going to oh that comes off there interesting I'm going to throw this back together because uh, there's not really much else to show on this right now make sure that that control is actually clean and uh, throw this one back together and then uh, one of these days when I do find that take up reel maybe we'll do a little longer video and try recording some music or something on it see how it sounds um, it probably doesn't sound too bad Looks like they just had a piece of, of tape over the top of the spline to here to hold the control in place. That's why it was stiff. So we'll do the same thing that they did before. We'll just put a piece of thin tape over the top of it and put the control back in. This will just beef it up a bit to hold the control in place. like that okay make sure everything still works okay we're making our test recording now after uh, cleaning the control we'll turn the control up and down and see how it sounds and we'll also try turning on the ALC. ALC is on. Is it recording? Yes or no? One, two, three. ALC is back off. If I yell into here, the uh, the micro the light will probably flash. Yeah, it does. All right, let's uh, let's just check the recording. And make sure it's still working. I guess we could try the slow speed as well. Okay, we're making our test recording now after uh, cleaning the control. Turn the control up and down. And we'll also try turning on the AL. 
The LC is on. Is it recording? Yes or no? One, two, three. I like that switch might be still a bit dirty. Well, we'll probably throw some cleaner down there. Just get some cleaner into the switch here this way. As it definitely is working now. The last time I tried recording when the ALC switch was on, I got nothing. Okay, we'll try this once again. Okay, we'll start with the ALC switch off. Okay, we're making another recording here. And uh, I can see the levels when I turn up the volume. I can see the levels on here. We'll turn the ALC switch on. ALC switch is now on. And you can see the light lit up when I yelled. Uh, so this is recording with automatic level control. So in other words, the background noise will come up when it's quiet. But if I talk loud, it will shut the volume down. And then if I talk quiet, it will... Um, bring the gain back up like it's supposed to. That's how ALC works. And we'll try this on playback. Okay, making another recording here. And I can see the levels when I turn up the volume. I can see the levels on here. We'll turn the ALC switch on. ALC switch is now on. And you can see the light lit up when I yelled. Uh, so this is recording with automatic level control. So I'll raise the background noise that come up when it's quiet. But if I talk loud, it will shut the volume down. And then if I talk quiet, it will uh, bring the gain back up like it's supposed to. That's how ALC works. So that works. We'll try the we'll try the slower speed. So we'll just take the, the capstan off. And that's what this is for. This is to hold the capstan sleeve. For when you're uh, not using it, I was putting the tape around there. The tape probably doesn't even isn't even supposed to go around. It's probably supposed to go just like that. Okay, we'll try a recording now. Oh, guess what? It's not pulling the tape because well, I guess it's the uh, maybe the pinch roller is a bit weak. There it goes. Okay, so now we're recording at the slower, lower quality, one and seven eighths IPS. Double the recording time. I'll have to try to find that little reel for this uh, tape recorder. But uh, yeah, it's it's from 1965 and it works. Pulling the tape because, well, I guess it's the, uh, it's the pinch roller is a bit weak. There it goes. Okay, so now we're recording at the slower, lower quality 1 and 7 8 IPS double the recording time. I'll have to try to find that little reel for this uh, tape recorder. But uh, yeah, it's, it's from 1965 and it works. And of course if we put the, the sleeve back on, you'll hear the difference in the sound quality. So now we're back at three and three quarters and even off the voice recording you'll hear quite the difference in terms of sound quality. So now we're back at three and three quarters and even off the voice recording, you'll hear quite the difference in terms of sound quality. Background noise will come up when it's quiet. Anyway, um, yeah. Got it for free. I just looked on eBay and uh, there's one of these selling in untested condition for 120 bucks US. So what do you think this thing's worth? Should I hang on to it or should I find it a new home? A neat little unit and I'm sure there's not a lot of these left in the world that are still around because most people dumped a lot of this old stuff when cassette tapes came out. A lot of this old mono reel-to-reel -reel equipment just got disposed of. And here I have a perfect example of one that is, well, almost 60 years old and it still works this is definitely a collector's piece thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye